Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm doing another Game Spotlight video. Today's Game Spotlight is on an underrated title that should receive more praise and attention in both the Star Wars community and the Star Wars Battlefront community. I'm talking about none other than the PSP version of Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron. Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron was released on the PSP on November 3rd, 2009. There is a DS port as well, but I will be focusing on the PSP version for this video. This game is what was supposed to be Battlefront 3's campaign. This is confirmed through leaked footage later found repackaging the game. It's like Order 66 footage, y'all can google it, I'm not gonna show it off. But This was initially supposed to be ported to the PS2 I believe, but I guess they just couldn't do it, I don't know, but they kind of shrunk it down and due to hardware limitations doesn't look as flawless as it would on like newer generations like the PS3. I think that's what it was supposed to be initially, the Battlefront 3, but you know we got it on the PSP and this is a delightful experience not found in any other official Battlefront title. This is the first Battlefront game to feature ground and space combat and I think it is implemented very well. There is a little cutscene that takes you from each area and I think it's a decent way to cover up the load time. In the console version, this would probably be seamless. Now, due to being made before Disney bought Star Wars, and <laughs> like you get to see like a lot of cool crossover content, I think in this game and in um, the game that came before it, Renegade Squadron, those are cool titles for the PSP. Definitely gotta check that out as well. But in this game, you get General Rom Coda from Star Wars: The Force Unleashed, and it's just cool because back then this was all like in the same continuity. Now it's just Legends, and none of this shit happened. But that's okay. So, this game has a fun customizable loadout as well as pre-made loadouts. It is fun to use especially once you have unlocked like hella different stuff, especially during the campaign. This game features typical Battlefront game modes such as Galactic Conquest, Instant Action, and Multiplayer. Servers are dead nowadays, so I'm not gonna focus on that. Let's get into Galactic Conquest. Now, Galactic Conquest has been upgraded in my opinion. I've been able to win easily without having been <laughs> like having to fight a single battle, you know? You can do like automated ones, you just have it run auto and you can like just stomp over these guys, you know? It's AI, so it's not the same. It'd be fun to have a multiplayer uh, Galactic Conquest, but basically you take over planets and load them up with troops. You can invade and brute force your victories, or you can strategically invade nearby planets and work your way up to the home world you need to take over. For instance, if you take over Coruscant from the Republic, you win, regardless of however many planets you own in your territory. It's beneficial to take over many planets though, so you get a lot of credits in each round. You can buy a bunch of troops or upgrades such as weapons, you know, having more troops come down, stuff like that. Definitely one of the best game modes in gaming history in my opinion. Now, instant action is exactly as described. Pick a planet, pick a mode, pick an era, and jump straight into the battle. You start from the ground, space, or your capital ship. In Battlefront Elite Squadron, it is really important to take over the command post that has an ion cannon. The ion cannon will knock out their shields and allow you to invade their capital ship. Just hop in a starfighter and blow it up. Crash down on the planet in a space pod. Man, it's a thrilling game loop. You can just do this all day in my opinion. I enjoy doing it, but you know, it's not for everyone, but this is the first game to have ground to space combat, so it's very important, you know, utilize it and enjoy it while you can. Now, doing this accumulates points which adds to your score. The first one to reach the intended score gets victory. You get the points by getting command posts, killing your enemies, blowing up capital ships, stuff like that. I like all the stuff added into this version of Battlefront. It keeps it different from Battlefront 2 while still expanding on what came before it. Like I was saying, Renegade Squadron is another great PSP title I need to cover just so I can see what it added on from, you know, Battlefront 2 and what Lee Squadron took from that game. Now, Battlefront Elite Squadron has one of my favorite campaigns in a Star Wars title, spanning through three, you know, semi-different eras. The Clone Wars, very different. Galactic Civil War, very different. But it's a post-Galactic Civil War with like remnants of the Empire, which is kind of similar to the Galactic Civil War, but still slightly different. You know, the Emperor and Vader are gone, so it's cool, man. You get to see the galaxy change and take part in different events that are very important. And now at this point, I'm gonna start getting into the story a little bit and you know, there might be a few spoilers, so if you guys don't want to hear it, click off the video right now. Alright, let's get into the campaign. So you start off as X2, a run-of-the-mill clone trooper with an older brother named X1. The thing that sets you guys both apart, though, is that you guys are both Force-sensitive. This leads to important events later on in the story. You guys help train clone troopers on Tatooine, you find some droids, destroy transport ships, some cool shit. From planet to planet, you take part in the Clone Wars, but it all comes to a head at Cato Nemodia. Taking part in Order 66, you finally help end the war, but soon a new war starts. But this time, you're helping out the Rebels, so, so you see you you know, you change throughout the game, you go through a couple different things, man, it's so cool because you end up helping take out the Empire as well, and then under the guidance of Luke Skywalker, you're a full-fledged Jedi. You can utilize force powers, a lightsaber, blaster, however you like, man. 
the customizable loadouts is just really dope in this game. You can have it however you want, man. If you like a shotgun and a lightsaber, you can do that, you know? You can heal yourself too. It's really dope, man. I love the way this game just sets everything up, man. Especially through the campaign, you really just build up and you really feel cool, man. You go from a clone trooper in the Clone Wars to a Jedi, you know, taking out like all the bad guys. I don't want to spoil, you know, who the final boss is, but it's really cool, man. X2 and X1 have an interesting story and I love seeing the Clone Wars be a part of any game. My only dream is that this game gets released as intended. There are mods and projects out there working on bringing these Elite Squadron assets into Battlefront 2 on PC. I'm excited to see the progress. Overall, this is either my number one or number two favorite Battlefront title. The amount of hours I've sunk into this game is astounding, especially nowadays because I can play it on an emulator, I don't even need to whip out my PSP to do it. I love Battlefront 2, but there's just something different about this campaign and version of Conquest and Galactic Conquest. I recommend this game to anyone who likes Star Wars, likes Battlefront, or is looking for a game to try out on PSP. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.